planning meetings, strategy sessions, and a host of other time-wasting activities are commonplace in most sectors. But in broadcast journalism, most decisions are made on the spot, and even ideas that have been planned for months frequently turn out to be disastrous when put into action. Watch this video for some of the worst moments for sports reporters. Also, find out the full details on Robert Griffin III's on-air racial slur as he offers his apologies. First up, a TV host was struck by a football player while reporting from the sidelines. A Fox Sports newscaster got a little too near to the action while covering a notable high school football recruiting event in Oregon. Reporter Amy Campbell for Fox Sports Next was talking to the recruiting analyst Chad Simmons when rising football sensation Ermond Lane crashed into her from the sidelines. The entire episode was caught on camera and became an internet hit like many sports and news bloopers. Campbell later told the sports broadcasting network that she was unharmed. The video, however, amassed millions of views. Campbell is seen in the footage, which local news station ABC WPBF picked up, paying close attention to Simmons' speech until Ehrman sprints up behind her to receive a pass. Screams were heard as Campbell, Simmons, and Lane all fell and disappeared from view. Although Simmons attempted to block Campbell after spotting Lane approaching at the last second, he couldn't stop the four-star wide receiver. Lane, a rising senior at Homestead High School in Florida, is a powerhouse at 6'2 and weighs 193 pounds. According to Fox Sports, he was a highly sought-after prospect for colleges like Miami, Florida State, or Florida. According to the television report, the accident occurred at the opening, a summer recruitment camp for the top high school football players in the country, which was hosted at the Nike headquarters in Beaverton, Oregon. Following the collision, which went viral on YouTube, Campbell informed Fox Sports that she was unharmed. She admitted to the sports network that her knee had received some minor bruises. The mishap, according to Campbell, may have been caught on camera, but it wasn't the only event that day. Campbell said the high school football star had nearly collided with her numerous times while she was out there, adding that early Earlier in the day, he just missed her as he emerged from the end zone. Campbell took the event in stride and laughed on Twitter, where she wrote she could take a hit. When one of her followers said he had seen the video no less than 10 times in a few minutes, she maintained her good humor, stating it got funnier every time. Even after the crash, Campbell shared a photo of herself and Lane with the remark, still friends. Campbell revealed to Fox Sports that the moment the referee declared the pass complete, while being unaware of the mishap on the sidelines, was her favorite moment in the clip. Up next, Hannah Storm of ESPN pushing a makeup artist away on live television. Even for makeup artists, working on live television is challenging. Hannah Storm of ESPN swiftly pushed a cosmetic artist working on her away during a live Sports Center segment as soon as she noticed she was back on camera. After appearing frazzled for a split second, Storm regained her calm and immediately launched into a discussion of Green Bay Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers. According to Storm, who explained her on-air reaction on Twitter, the makeup artist, a close friend of hers, would have faced serious consequences if she had been seen on broadcast. Hence, to defend her, she had to do that. Live television frequently features a carefully scripted performance, but occasionally, things go wrong. Given the circumstances, Storm probably handled the issue as effectively as she could. Up next, ahead of the England-Scotland match, a Sky News reporter falls down the ladder at Wembley. Nick Collins, a correspondent for Sky Sports, seems to have a lovely, comfortable job. It's a fantastic job for anyone with a passion for football to travel the world follow the England team, and report back on all the chats before the big games. Collins learned the job was not all private interviews, opulent expense account dinners, and five-star hotels when he covered the England vs. Scotland game from Wembley. Everything appeared to be going according to plan, as Nick began his report with the customary discussion about whether Wayne Rooney will start and Scotland's chances of a surprise victory. That is, until Nick became too excited and began bouncing up and down on the stepladder, which he used to ensure his cameraman got the perfect shot at the ideal angle. He appeared to get unbalanced due to his exuberant delivery, and before you could say 442, he began to fall. Once he got going, there was no stopping him. But like a true pro, he managed to cling to his match notes, despite landing face first on the Wembley pavement. Up next, after England's World Cup loss to Croatia, a furious football fan throws beer over a reporter. At a screening in Croydon, London, News Hub New Zealand correspondent Lloyd Burr witnessed the reaction to 
England's World Cup semi-final defeat by Croatia. An angry fan interrupted the New Zealanders' broadcast when he was covering the match from a London bar and proceeded to hurl a beer in his face live on air. Professionally handing the situation, Burr wiped his face before carrying on with his program. Richard Sutherland, the head of broadcast news at NewsHub, said everyone in the room was happy to hear that they were okay, and he praised them for continuing to work as usual. He claimed it was unacceptable that reporting personnel should be subjected to such thuggish behavior while attempting to perform their professional tasks. He added that anyone who chose to commit a criminal attack because they are angry about the outcome of a sporting event ought to take a long, hard look at themselves and possibly reassess their life choices. Up next, late Craig Sager was once asked by Kevin Garnett to go home and burn his clothes. A man who isn't hesitant to express his opinions is Kevin Garnett, who played for the Minnesota Timberwolves for years and won an NBA championship with the Boston Celtics. Craig Sager, a beloved sports reporter who passed away recently, was well known for wearing flashy sports coats and vibrant clothing. The results of their meeting were inevitable. Garnett only instructed Sager to return home and destroy his clothing. NBA TV reporter Craig Sager caught up with Kevin Garnett outside the locker room following an NBA game involving the big man. Garnett requested 10 to 15 seconds seconds after the interview to leave Sager a personal message. When the message was delivered, Sager was dressed in a pink sports coat, red slacks, and striking red shoes. Garnett told him to take his clothes home and burn them that night. He said he didn't care if it was Versace or a well-known name brand. He stressed that he burned the clothes that night. Sager just grinned and thanked Garnett for the suggestion. Up next, after allegedly being molested on live television, a reporter smacks a fan with a microphone. After allegedly being touched during a live television show, a reporter recently yelled at a fan. Following the team's victory over Toronto, Fox Sports Mexico journalist Maria Fernanda Mora conducted a live report outside Guadalajara Stadium. In a video, Mora was seen speaking to the camera and interacting with several fans to gauge their emotions. There were initially only two subjects for the interview, but soon more men joined in and around Mora. She occasionally turned her microphone to the people singing in the arena. As the crowd continues to cheer, Mora turns and strikes one of them with her microphone because, in her opinion, he touched her improperly. She said in a statement posted on Twitter that at first, she assumed he was unintentionally rubbing against her behind due to the showing going on, but after he did it twice more, she decided to take action. According to Mora, thousands of women every day in innumerable public settings experience what she did. She said the fact that she chose to defend herself on live television makes a difference. Up next, a high school basketball player looks at the reporter during the interview. Sam Jones, a senior guard from Minnesota's De La Salle High School, was observed going a little too intently at Ali Arat, a KSTC TV site sideline reporter as she spoke with coach Dave Thorson following their victory. After the video went viral, Jones tweeted he was advised not to look at the camera, so he looked at her. Arit, a Minnesotan woman in her fifth year as a broadcast journalist, said she was unsure of who would have instructed Jones to avoid looking at the camera. She acknowledged that she hadn't instructed him to face the camera. According to Arit, she didn't tell him to look at the camera, but she didn't tell him to stare straight through her soul. When Arit pulled her phone from her handbag after dinner with her co-workers, she claimed she wasn't aware where the post-game scene had gone viral. Arit said she picked up her phone, and there was a text message from a high school acquaintance she hadn't spoken to in probably six years, which read she was all over the internet. Jones and Arit also texted each other. She claimed she had expressed gratitude for him for giving her widespread exposure. According to Arit, Jones and his teammate discussed who would be interviewed after the game. Arit remarked that some of it was probably a joke with one of his buddies. She believed the poor youngster took a lot of flack. Finally, Robert Griffin III apologizes for on-air racial slur. Before the network's Monday night broadcast of the Cardinals vs. Patriots game, Robert Griffin III reviewed the Eagles' significant victory over the Giants for ESPN when he attempted to laud Philadelphia quarterback Jalen Hurts. Robert Griffin III apologizes profusely and maintains that he merely misspoke when he used an anti-black slur during the Monday night football pregame program. The former quarterback said he needed to be clear about the incident. He added he did not mean to say that. After that, the 32-year-old clarified that he was attempting to use the term bugaboos. Despite his intentions, he apologized and added he recognized the historical significance of the word he used. ESPN has not yet made any public remarks about the situation. These things are not actually planned for they just happen. Let us know what you think about sports reporters' worst moments in the comments section. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.